Hi, I'm Jeremy, one of the authors of Machine Learning Refined, a university textbook about machine learning foundations, algorithms, and applications. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of code you can play with. You can download this code from our website, which I'm showing you here, at mlrefined.com. You can also find a variety of sample chapters from the book on this website, as well as video tutorials on a range of machine learning topics. The code I'm going to show you today comes from Chapter 3 of the textbook, which is about regression and predictive modeling. You can find this chapter on the book website and download a PDF of it for free. Now in particular, this code illustrates a concept known as L2 regularization, which is described later in this chapter. So let's go there now. L2 regularization is described in much detail in this section, section 3.3.2. It's titled Non-Convex Cost Functions and L2 Regularization. It kind of gives away the point of L2 regularization, which is that it helps us, I mean, practically speaking, to uh, more easily minimize non-convex cost functions. Now before jumping into the piece of code that's going to help to illustrate that concept, I first want to help you to uh, intuit what's going on here by looking at a one-dimensional example that is also described in this part of the text. If we scroll down to figure 3.12 here, in the left panels, both in the top left panel and the bottom left panel here, we show two examples of non-convex cost functions. Non-convex cost functions like this arise all the time in machine learning, particularly when using a neural network. There is a simple problem associated with trying to minimize such cost functions that's illustrated very nicely in this example, which is that it has too many flat regions. There's a flat region here on the left, there's a flat region here in the middle, and there's a flat region here on the right. Now, those of you who are familiar with Chapter 2 of the text, which introduces numerical optimization, and in particular, gradient descent and Newton's method, which are two of the most popular algorithms used in machine learning today, um, you can download Chapter 2 as well from the book website. Now, those of you who are familiar with those, those algorithms and the way they're described in that chapter, uh, you know that gradient descent and Newton's method work on the principle that they go downwards, or they travel downwards, so, so say we initialized at a point W here, and, and up here we start going downwards, those algorithms halt when you reach a stationary point. In, in this case, it's a minimum, if we say initialized in this region of the function. Likewise, if we initialized in this region of the function, those algorithms would travel downward, downward, downward until they reach a stationary point here, but they halt at stationary points, which means if we unfortunately initialize either of those algorithms on the flat region here on the left and the middle or on the right, the algorithm will immediately halt because we are already at a stationary point or a point that's approximately a stationary point, so we're not going to go anywhere. One way to ameliorate that issue is by uh, using L2 regularization. On the right here, is what's called the L2 regularized version of this original cost function on the left. Now notice that this, ver this L2 regularized form of the cost function is kind of bowed outwards, or it's been slightly convexified. Now practically speaking, what that means is, notice if we, uh, in the original cost function, if we were to have initialized somewhere around here in a flat region, we wouldn't have gone anywhere because we were already at a stationary point. But it's analogous point on the L2 regularized function is no longer flat, but it's convex. So if we initialize again here, we're actually going to go downhill, say with gradient descent, and find the minimum here. Likewise, if we, on the original cost function, if we initialize, say, over here where the cost function, original cost was, uh, was flat, we wouldn't have gone anywhere because those are all approximately stationary points. But by convexifying, slightly convexifying the full cost function, if we initialize on uh, that same point on the L2 regularized cost, that's now a convex portion of the function and we're going to travel downward and then say downward to this global minimum. Okay. Now we haven't dealt with the middle portion of the function which is still problematic if we initialize somewhere in here. Say on the original cost it was flat. Here it's bowed outward in either direction and if we initialize say here we're going to actually travel to a stationary point kind of near the middle of that flat part of the function. But we have dealt with the issue of getting caught on flat areas that were originally on the left and the right of that cost. So that's what LL2 regularization allows us to do. 
and how to achieve this LT regularized form of the original cost function. I'll leave the mathematical details for you to check out in the text itself, but it's really quite simple. To go from the original cost function that had these problematic flat areas on the left and right to the L2 regularized form that dealt with those problems at least on the left and the right, all we do is add a very simple convex cost function to this original cost. Okay, let's look at some code. Today what I'm going to show you is essentially an interactive version of another figure which if you scroll down you can take a look at figure 3.13 here. So let's check it out. I'm going to show you this in Python but you can find an equivalent wrapper written in MATLAB or Octave on the book website. The piece of code is called L2 Reg Logistic and when you press run up will pop a figure with two panels in it. In the left panel is a data set of black points that are roughly distributed like a logistic sigmoid. Shown in addition to those data points are two fits to the data, one that's pretty bad in green and one that's pretty good in magenta or purple. Now the reason why you get such drastically different uh, fits to this data set is that the cost function associated to it is non-convex and it's shown in the right panel here. This g of w is the cost function. Now this is not only non-convex but it has a bad flat region to it just like that 1D example I just discussed. So in particular shown on top of this uh, on top of the, the cost function here are shown two curves one in green which just illustrates the steps taken by gradient descent. If it begins here, it will end in the bad flat region at some stationary point here. Okay, I'll rotate it around a little bit. Now, the parameters associated with the final gradient descent step, okay, here, because we've ended up on a bad flat region, are not going to be good parameters. They're not going to help us fit a model to that data set very well. The, the model that fits that data set associated with this green uh, green run of gradient descent is the green fit over here on the left panel. It's not very good, which is not surprising. We have not minimized the cost function very well because we initialized near a bad flat region of the cost. Now likewise if we initialize a little bit better, uh, say here we take a, a magenta run of gradient descent, take steps downward, 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 we're going towards a global minimum of the function the parameters given to us by the final step of gradient descent in this case give us a good fit shown in magenta over here. Using the same wrapper you can see what happens when you add an L2 regularizer to that non-convex cost. You can do that by simply playing around with this single parameter in the main function called lamb. It's going to be initially set to zero, but by changing it to something small and positive like 10 to the minus 1, we add an L2 regularizer a convex function to that original non-convex cost. Run the code again, up's going to pop the same figure, but you see some things have changed. In the left panel is still the data, along with the associated fits, and in the right panel is still a, con a cost function, but by adding that L2 regularizer, right, it looks a little bit different than it did last time. So we still have two runs of gradient descent, one green initialized up here, and one magenta initialized here, but what was once a large flat region that the gradient descent initialized here got caught in, right, leading to a bad fit to the data, has now been convexified by that L2 regularizer. So instead of traveling in this direction and getting stuck at a bad stationary point, gradient descent can now go downward, 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 and reach the same global minimum that the magenta run of gradient descent reaches. So by adding that L2 regularizer, we really have done away with this bad flat region of the original cost function, and now initializing, you know, even up here is still okay to do. We still reach a very good global minimum of the function.